years ago. Yeah, so two years ago, that was in my mind, right, purchasing 22 unit apartment building. I actually made an offer on a nine unit apartment building right by the Hampton General Hospital, 1.2 million. The guy wanted 1.4 million and he ended up selling it for 1.345 million, right? Two years ago, I, I really wanted to get into apartment buildings because you look at, you look at how uh, over the next five years, 10 years, you're gonna have more people renting, not owning a home, right? In this generation, the spending generation, the debt generation, the younger people are gonna be renting. So if you are the, the, the landlord who owns these apartment buildings and you are in a position where there's a lot of demand, right, you're gonna, be, you're gonna make a fortune, right? So that was my thinking, right? Uh, as over time, interest rate goes up, and it's just how the millennials, how, they, how, how their needs are. It's very different compared to the previous generation and the baby boomers. The millennials, right, uh, they, they spend, right? Uh, and they, they, their needs are very, are very different, right? Uh, go on. Question, outside of walking the area five or seven years ago when your time was, what economic drivers did you use to say um, Hamilton or the subsection of Hamilton was the spot for you to invest in? So outside of talking to the neighbors, yeah. what economic drivers are like, okay, this is coming or this is here that you used to pull the trigger? At which point in time? When, when I, I first started? Yeah, when we first started. Yeah. When I first started? Yeah. <laughs> Good question, because when I first started, I didn't know anything. Oh. Right? I, w I was brought to Hamilton by a real estate uh, friend who already had one property in Hamilton. And it was a whole new world for me. Before the new world train station came, this was July 9th, 2015, I believe. Mm -hmm. right? uh, you know, before all of that stuff happened and James Street North was James Street today. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about Hamilton, but what I saw was there was life in this town, right? And, but all I knew was the numbers were it, it made sense. I ran the numbers and you from, 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 from the property prices to the rent prices down to the cash flow numbers, I was a numbers person. That was my weekends, Fridays, nights, weekends, right? Just doing numbers on properties, a lot of them, right? In the first year, 10 months, every day, every night. Realtor.ca, looking all over for properties, going to Hampton, driving up and down like a crazy person, looking for properties, doing the numbers. And you know what? Right? More than 50% of them actually cash flowed. Today, one in every hundred. Yeah, it's, it's shifted. Yeah. You know, it takes you a while to, after you keep looking, to find one good one. So you said when you were here, you, you saw that there was life. Can you describe what that? Mention Life the meaning, that weekend I went to the Super Crawl. I didn't even know what this festival was, right? It was, you know, like 10, 20,000 people. Today is over 100. A recent one, a couple uh, last month, right? Close to half a million. Between 200, 500,000 people. Coming to the festival. In this festival. Roads are closed off. You got, you know, uh, big perform music performances, food trucks, all these vendors and everyone, it's, it just really turned into a huge festival in downtown Hamilton. That's a, that's a really good thing. The reason I'm asking is like, um, to get those returns there today is not gonna be the same 2023 20, or whatever date is. So I'm asking to kind of gauge what key aspects it can take and go to Windsor, Sault Ste. Marie, um, Winnipeg even, just for argument's sake, and see if I can mimic some key indicators yeah. So elsewhere. It goes back to the basic. Real estate is very local. Mm -hmm. You walk up and down the street, you knock on every door, you talk to the owners or the neighbors, and they tell you everything. How much they're renting for, what they love about the area, did anyone die in the area, did they get shot, 
real estate is local. That's how you learn about the market. That's what I did. For a few months, I walked up and down with my map that I bought from Staples for five bucks. Walked up and down every street, even in the crazy areas where people have no teeth, mm -hmm. right? And the, you, you know, they, they don't smell too good. Mm -hmm. And But I would talk to them like a normal human being to understand, right, how long they lived in the area, when they first bought, at what price, and what do they think the value of the property is today. Then you start to get an idea of growth in different neighborhoods different streets and then on your map in your back pocket you put an x on which area where people got shot mm -hmm. <laughs> right you put a, you, and then you you put a circle on an area where you see potential to invest because they've got decent people right rent out demand quality of tenants are looking good right and you see potential to make money. And you know those three things again, rent prices, who you're renting to and how quickly. And you look at the properties from the outside, if you get an opportunity to even go on the inside, right, uh, by invitation from the owner, then you can get more assessment of the value of the property, the condition, and how much they're renting for, and that's what they're renting for, whoa. This is a street you want to invest in. Do it in Windsor, do it all over in Chatham, everywhere mm -hmm. in Ontario, right? That's what I would do if I, if I started today. And that's what I did six, seven years ago. You know, I did a TV interview, this was uh, last year, two years ago, right, where I, tell, I told everyone in the audience how when I first started, I literally, I thought I was nuts. I was crazy, 21 years old, and for me, I was just real estate and I was obsessed. All of my friends, they went out, they're having fun, they're drinking, they're having sex, they're smoking, and they're probably smoking the green stuff that was that is legal <laughs> last month. <laughs> right? Um, you know, and it's just really thinking about your financial future, right? And, and then uh, progressively working towards that goal and you know you're gonna be a very happy person. <laughs> That's what I'll say. <laughs> you had a question. <laughs> Look, we we all in that age, you know, who does who does not like to have sex? <laughs> We're all in that age. Right? But I tell you, you know what's 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 not fun? When you got financial problems. You can't pay your bills. You are having constant argument with your significant other, right? You can't even, uh, you know, afford to buy a house, right? You can't afford, you delay having children because you don't have, you're thinking, oh, I'm not there yet financially. You know, I wanna sort of uh, save up a bit more till I'm a bit more stable, the debts are down to zero. And then you can start to have those things. You start early, and you'll be very happy in the very near future, right? So, so the next segment of this meetup, I actually wanted to, to share with, I brought some books, right? To just show you, right, when I first started, what kind of books was I reading that helped to develop my mindset and intuition? Okay, can I show you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 